What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at AMT Ertl's 1975 Corvette Convertible 50th Anniversary Edition. Now, this model car is out of my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now, let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And now we're going to rock and roll all night and party all day long in our 1975 Corvette Convertible. This model car came out in 2002 by AMT Ertl to celebrate Corvette's 50th anniversary for 2003, and this model kit at the time was an all-new item. The AMT Ertl 1975 Corvette Convertible kit is a skill level 2 model, which is intended for ages 10 and up and requires paint and glue to assemble. As we see on the pictures on the side of the box, we have the nice interior, the 350 cubic inch engine, and a nice rear view shot of the impact bumper for 1975. And now with the shrink wrap removed, we can easily lift the lid off this model. And there it is. Now you can see inside we have our instruction sheet, which we'll take a look at later on in the video. Make sure there's no decals to spring out on us. Here's our chrome. And then we have our body shell in a bag, the glass in a bag, which is nice. It stops it from getting scratched up. And then we have all our great components. And then we've got our wheels down here. Our model kit instructions are the fold out map style, which comes out pretty long on your hobby bench. And to begin our instruction sheet, we have this nice illustration of the 1975 Corvette decked out with a whole bunch of 70s style graphics. Our tire choice is very 1970s with these BF Goodrich radial TAs, quite a popular tire of the era. And then we have a web inside, which we got to remove. Then we've got our wheel backs with another web inside, which we need to remove. And then our stock wheels up front. And if you want a custom look, try these ones. Panel 2 shows our 350 cubic inch Chevy small block going together. This engine would become a staple in Corvettes because the year before the 454 was dropped out of the production run. So here we have our right and left hand side of the engine with the transmission in place. We get a nice chrome oil pan, a chrome front cover, chrome starter motor. Then we have our cylinder heads and chrome valve covers. Now for 1975, there was only two engine options. One was a 165 horsepower 350 cubic inch V8, and the other was a special high performance 205 horsepower 350 V8. So what we have here is our actual air cleaner, carburetor, the uh, distributor here in two pieces with the shield of course, and then our intake manifold. Now for the custom, you do have a choice of the tricarbs, which is an earlier style engine upgrade. However, this would give the 350 quite a lot more performance and horsepower. There's a triangular air cleaner, the three carburetors, the intake manifold, and again, our two-piece distributor. Panel four shows our completed engine going together. Here we have, of course, the stock setup for the intake manifold and whatnot going on the top, and then our custom version, which could be in place of that. Then we have our alternator, our fans and pulleys, and our fan. In panel five, we jump into our front suspension here, and this is really nice because it is a posable suspension. So we get our chassis, and then we have our tie rod here, going on to our king pins up front. And we've got all the paint callouts going in here. There's our brakes. Then we have an anti-sway bar and our upper A-arms. As we slip into the back of our car, we have this beautiful two-piece rear differential, our anti-sway bar, and then we have the little drive shafts here going to our rear wheels, as well as our spare tire cover and our rear brakes and some arms here as well. Panel 7 shows our engine being installed onto the chassis with our drive shaft going back into our rear differential. 
Panel 8 shows our radiator and our fan shroud being glued in place on the chassis. You do get an upper radiator hose which drops in on the engine block and here's our firewall being glued into place. Panel 9 shows our exhaust manifolds being glued onto the engine which is quite tricky in this location. And then here we have our cross brace and our exhaust pipes and mufflers with the catalytic converter which was all new for 1975 and then we have our wheels being glued into place. Panel 10 shows our interior going together and you do have a choice of stock or racing as we can see here. So we have our dashboard with an optional piece gluing on here, our steering wheel and console and then the optional tachometer. We have a race helmet which you can place anywhere in the car then you have your stock bucket seats going in place and you can also add in the four point racing harness. And here we have a optional roll bar with the two braces in the back. Very nice racing interior. Over here in panel 11, we can see the inner splash aprons being glued to the inside of the Corvette, which seems to be a very popular way that the manufacturers make these model kits. I know that uh, Ravel does this the same way. And then you slip your hood in and there's two little notches here on the fender splash aprons to hold that hood in place. In panel 12 we see our front bumper going in place as well as our glass gluing into the frame with our little rear view mirror and here we get separate grills with the parking lamps. To finish things off we have panel 13 which is our final assembly. So here we see our chassis and then our interior will drop into place with our body going on top of all of that. And then here we have our racing mirror on the side, a chrome gas cap to go up top, and then we've got our red taillights gluing into the back of the bumper. And to top it all off we have this nice side exhaust setup. And here we have our 1975 Corvette convertible body shell. This is the last year of Corvette convertible, 1975. The next time we would see one would be in 1986. But as you can see it is a nice casting. There are some pieces you need to remove from our uh, windshield post there. Then we have our sugar scoops on the side with the stingray above it. The nice parking light on the side. The grill, which of course we'll have to glue on later. You can see the flip up headlights. Right here, very small, is the Corvette logo, which was reduced from the 1974 models. Then as we go around here, you can see the nice vents across the back. There's our little Corvette emblem here on the gas filler lid. They do have the little pieces to hook up your top on. You'll notice that the rear bumper is actually molded in place on the body, which is quite nice. One less thing you need to glue on, and it does look very nice in here. There's no sink marks like the 1974 AMT Corvette. Again, very nicely done. Very little mold marks in the underneath of this thing. So there's our body shell. Now the only downside to this model kit is that the front bumper actually does have a bit of a fit issue. As you can see here, there's quite a big gap. Now this is a model kit that I was working on earlier before I did the reviews. And uh, as you can see, again, the front bumper does have a gap issue in it. But, you know, with a little bit of putty work, this should look really good overall. Eight part trees make up the gray components for this model car kit. Our first gray parts tree includes a component that wasn't listed in the instruction sheet, and that is our trunk mounted luggage rack, which is really quite nice. Here's our hood with the vent included, as well as our little air cleaner our radiator, our fan shroud, and our spare tire mount. And as you can see from this side there are no mold marks in there. The flash is reduced well. All the mold marks are on the back which is quite nice and under the hood. So again a little bit of cleanup with the number 16 hobby blade. You can see that nice hood mat underneath there and a bit of ribbing in the spare tire mount which you'll never see afterwards. But it's still nice to know that it's there. It makes the part a lot stronger. Here's your engine block to make your car fly, Robin fly, and as you can see it is quite nice. You get the molded in frost plugs. This is an automatic car and the automatic transmission looks really nice. There's our posable suspension components for the front as well as the rear, our roll cage, our drive shaft, and then the cross brace upper radiator hose the belts and pulleys, our intake manifold, and our cylinder heads. Keep in mind that most of this engine is on the chrome tree, 
But again, looking at the components, you can see the nice detailing. And again, the mold marks are on the opposite side. You'll have to clean them up around the suspension components, but inside the engine block, you should be fine. Intake manifold looks really nicely done as well. And overall, this should be quite easy to assemble. And to continue on on this parts tree, we have our two catalytic converters, our lower A arms for our suspension, our four brakes. These are gauges for the dashboard, racing gauges. And then we have our four piece harness uh, seat belts. And then on this side, we have our tricarb intake manifold, which as you can see is quite nicely detailed. And again, everything looks really well, mold marks, but overall, this should look really good and be easy to assemble. This parts tree includes our inner splash aprons, our firewall, the racing helmet, our exhaust pipes with the mufflers, and the upper and lower differential rear axle. Detailing on these parts is quite nice with all the little wiring going in on our firewall, as well as around on our splash aprons. Helmet is nice and our differential as well. And underneath again, a bit of mold marks here and there on the inner wheel aprons, which of course would be covered by the tire. But again, it's always nice to remove them for more accuracy. Now we can do two parts trees together. Here we have our front bumper and these racing exhaust headers, which are also not in the instruction sheet. Then here we have our steel factory wheels, which look nice. They do have the little cones for the front wheels and then the no cones for the backs and our wheel backs. Now just take a look at these wheels here. You can see that all the proper bolts are in place. They look like GM factory wheels. The backs are nice. You got to cut that web out of the center. Now, as you may recall, I had opened up these three holes underneath here, but on the model kit itself, right out of the bag, they're not open. So if you want that look, you'll have to drill them out yourself. And then our exhaust hitters again are quite nice. So overall, we got some really cool components. And here we have our interior tub. We've got the steering wheel taped inside with a piece of scotch tape, our bucket seats and our dashboard. And now these are upside down so we can just as easily turn them over. And you can see all that nice detailing inside there. We have our dashboard with the big sunken in gauges and our map pocket here. And then we've got our radio for when you want to listen to I Love the Music or SOS. And then of course our seats with a nice upholstery pattern in there. And then looking at the interior tub, of course everything is molded as one piece, but you do get the proper automatic style pedals in there and the little compartments underneath as well as our door handles and pulls. So it is quite nice. And the steering wheel is our little rally wheel with the three spokes and the holes. And last but not least, we have our chassis pan. And as you can see again, the detailing on this is quite superb. Very nicely done. All the little ribbing and wires and hoses underneath in there. Brake lines and you name it. Then all our sink marks are up on this side, which again is a nice touch. Because I really hate trying to fix sink marks when they're like inside of things and... They're not even sunken, they're just, you know, depressed and that sort of thing. So again, very nicely done for the engineers at AMT. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and as you may recall, we saw these wheels included in the kit. These wheels are actually a bonus to the model kit, just like that luggage rack was, because these wheels are stock rally wheels with the caps removed for racing. And down here on our chrome parts tree, they actually included the stock wheels with those center caps. So that's quite a nice treat to get the extra wheels. Then here we have our 1975 vector style wheels, which are quite nice again. Now, I do believe that these are also factory wheels, but they came out more in 76 and 75. Although you guys could correct me on that if I'm wrong. But anyway, these are also Corvette wheels. And as you can see, we do get a lot of the chrome components in here for our engine. However, you could strip the chrome off some of them. Do your research on your Chevy engine block for the era to uh, actually make sure if it is stock or if all that chrome plating is just customized on there from like later on. I'm pretty sure they didn't have a chrome oil pan, for example. It would have been Chevy orange, but I could be wrong. Again, 
look at your research. So you can see the nice detailing on all these components. It is a great addition. These would be great to keep for other 75 Corvettes or even earlier Camaros on these wheels. And again, there's our front grills with the marker lights in place. A whole bunch of beautiful stuff on here. And of course, well worth the effort from AMT Ertl. Here we have our clear components for a 1975 Corvette. And you may have noticed a little thing that's interesting here. Since this is convertible, we have this nice huge piece of rear glass in here. This is actually the glass from a 1978 Corvette, which was brand new at that time period. Did not hinge open, but it did increase the luggage room in the back of the car. However, this is 1978. So if you do have a 78 Corvette with a broken rear window, you could substitute this one in its stead. But in the meantime, what you need for your 75 convertible, of course, is a front windshield, so you can easily cut it off here and here. And then in the back, we have our rear red taillights, and they hook into the body on these little pins on the back. And to uh, add to the furtherness of this, you would need to paint the centers of these white to act as your backup lights. Finally, we have our BF Goodrich Radial TA tires, and they have the nice lettering on the sides there, and a very nice tread pattern on this. These are very typical of the 1970s tires. The BF Radials would have been brand new around this time period, and again, these will look very nice on your model car. Finally, we have our very exciting decal sheet, which includes a 50th anniversary license plate for your Corvette, as well as a Michigan Auto No license plate. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1975 Corvette Convertible. Now, if you've built this model kit in the past, we would love to see your photographs of it over on our Facebook page, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, we hope you enjoyed that unboxing of the AMT Ertl 1975 Corvette Convertible 50th Anniversary Edition. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!